Hi, and welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. I'm your host, Matt, and today we've got the first exclusive look at AMD's Radeon R9 390X. When AMD launched its new Radeon HD 7970, we were all impressed with the all new GCN architecture and its performance. Almost two years later, AMD re-released the HD 7970, rebadged as the R9 280X. It did have GCN 1.1, but unfortunately, performance was pretty much the same. A year after that, we saw the final R9 200 series card, the R9 285, with GCN 1.2. Again, performance failed to impress. GCM 1.2 had offered no real performance advantages over the first two versions, and here we are, three and a half years down the track to discover they've done it again. The 300 series are just the same rebadged GPUs with slightly improved specs. The R9 390X is the R9 290X, with twice the memory buffer, now eight gigabytes, which is frankly unnecessary, and slightly higher core and memory clock speeds. We suspect that again, this isn't gonna to translate to any sort of significant performance boost. We don't see how it could. So there's one thing left to do. Let's take it to the lab and find out. In Crisis 3, the 390X produced 39 frames per second, five frames higher than the 290X and just a single frame behind the GDX 980. In Battlefield Hardline, we saw the 390X get a smooth 62 frames per second, four more than the 290X and three less than the GDX 980. In Dying Light, the 390X gave us a playable 45 frames, just three more than the 290X and four less than the GDX 980. In GDA 5, the 390X produced an average of 62 frames, which was again just three frames more than the 290X and four less than the GDX 280. Finally, in Metro Redux, the 390X gave us 43 frames per second. This was four frames more than the 290X and seven less than the GDX 980. As you can see, the 390X performance results are nothing to write home about when compared to its predecessor. With the biggest spec change being the extra four gigabytes of memory buffer, this didn't translate to any significant performance increase as suspected, just 9% over the previous 290X. This sounds okay, but you have to keep in mind that you can probably close that gap and if not, easily halve that gap by overclocking the R9 290X. And that the 290X and 390X are gonna have the same overclocking limitations. Price-wise, at the moment AMD is recommending 429 US dollars for the R9 390X. Meanwhile, the 290X can be had for between 300 and 350 US and there are eight gigabyte models floating around for 380 US. Where we do think the R9 390X does represent some values when compared to the GeForce GDX 980. At $429, it's around 15% cheaper than the GeForce GDX 980, yet its performance was only about 7% slower in our tests. This has been Matt from Harbour Unboxed. We hope you've enjoyed this first exclusive look at AMD's R9 390X. Let me know what you think in the comments, hit like, hit subscribe, and don't forget to check out our other R9 300 series videos. See you next time. Yeah.